There's been another major spill at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Workers were putting highly radioactive water into a storage tank, but they put in too much, and more than 100 tons spilled out. We were in the process of transferring contaminated water into a storage tank. But the water was directed to the wrong tank. And it overflowed. The water overflowed barriers surrounding the tank. Workers detected high levels of radioactivity in the water. They found concentrations of strontium and other isotopes reaching 230 million becquerels per liter. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say the crews have closed all valves and taken other measures to contain the spill. They say they don't think the water reached the Pacific Ocean. Now they're trying to determine whether the accident was the result of operator error or a technical malfunction. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is looking into what caused the latest spill of radioactive water. The water contained the highest levels of radioactive substances of any spill from a storage tank at the plant. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company say the water overflowed from a seam near the top of the tank. About 100 tons spilled onto the ground below. They say the water contained 240 million becquerels per liter of beta ray emitting substances, including strontium. The officials say water that had gone through a desalination device was supposed to flow down another pipe. But it was mistakenly directed to the tank where it spilled out. They say three valves that should have been closed were open, and one of them may have been broken. TEPCO officials say an alarm signaled an increase in the tank's water level more than nine hours before workers spotted the spill. But the water gauge showed a sharp drop, leading them to believe the alarm sounded due to a malfunction. So the workers checked areas around the tank, but not inside. <laughs> Japan got a briefing on the water leak and said they're worried about its impact. The water may have stayed in the soil, but consumers are going to be increasingly worried. This news came as a shock. TEPCO people should make sure there's no more human error, otherwise our distrust is going to get stronger. Sato said the situation could also hinder the utility's plan to release groundwater into the ocean before it gets contaminated. The plant have another problem. They rely on thermometers to gauge whether melted nuclear fuel is being cooled sufficiently. But they say there's now only one in reactor number two that's working. TEPCO officials say on Tuesday, workers found a problem with one of the two remaining thermometers used to monitor the inside of the reactor. They looked into the cause and found that workers accidentally caused a short circuit while performing checks. The company continues to pour water into the reactor to cool melted fuel at the bottom. TEPCO officials made their announcement more than 24 hours after workers uncovered the problem. But they say the faulty thermometer showed a similar reading, about 20 degrees Celsius, as the working one. So they say they failed to notice the abnormality immediately. The officials say replacing the gauge is likely to take time because of high radiation levels in and around the reactor. They say a new thermometer will have to be inserted through a Japanese pipe. Japanese and U.S. nuclear experts are considering the possible introduction of a risk assessment system at nuclear plants in Japan. The new system would allow plant operators to be better prepared for accidents. Japan's industry ministry invited six U.S. experts to a two-day roundtable forum that opened in Tokyo on Thursday. They include Commissioner George Apostolakis of the nuclear, U.S. Nuclear Regula Regulatory Commission and a senior official of the U.S. Department of Energy. Japanese experts hope to learn from U.S. experience using the Probabilistic Risk Assessment, or PRA. PRA is designed to improve checkup and safety steps by systematically examining at each plant what can go wrong, the probability of it occurring, and the possible consequences. U.S. experts told the meeting that the method has increasingly been put into use after the Three Mile Island accident in 1979. 
In an interview with NHK, Apostolakis said that the method has helped identify levels of priority in repairing or replacing equipment and facilities, leading to better safety. And this is a significant, tremendous advantage. You know, it really helps the plant manager understand the plant and where resources should be expended to reduce the risk. Some Japanese experts said they want to learn about the method as the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant accident revealed Japan was ill-prepared for disasters such as a tsunami. No shit. But others have cautioned that care must be taken when using the PRA. They say what are perceived as low probability risks should not be overlooked. My, my presentation. Earlier this year, an important agreement among the government, TEPCO, and the Financial Committee was reached on a new comprehensive business plan that will TEPCO that will put TEPCO on the road to long-term viability and decreased dependence on taxpayers' support, while ensuring prompt fair compensation for those who have suffered losses and adequate resources for the big mediation at Fukushima. But the townspeople can't go back now. Kyoko made a decision to view the shelter as her new hometown. She began photographing life there. In June, the shelter occupants' lives were turned upside down once again. The new mayor decided to relocate the town office to Iwaki City in Fukushima. He felt that the town hall should be closer to Futaba, so the staff could work toward reconstruction in cooperation with other local authorities. Services that the older evacuees had relied on were cut, one after another. The 114 people who remained sensed that before long the shelter would close. Kyoko Izawa watched as people around her began to look for new accommodations. In the aftermath of the nuclear accident, Kyoko had evacuated from place to place under instructions from the town authorities. And this is the last truck leaving. But Kyoko doesn't want to move to Iwaki City in Fukushima. If I could go back to Futaba, or my home, I would return to Fukushima. But I wouldn't live in any other part of the prefecture. Miyako and her mother, Masa, have also put down roots. Masa has become a regular patient at a nearby hospital over the past two years. Miyako has decided not to return to Fukushima so that Masa can continue to see her doctor here. She begins looking for a place nearby where they can live. Miyako and her husband head to a public housing complex near the hospital. People affected by the nuclear accident or tsunami are entitled to a rent subsidy of about $600 per month for a family of three. Next, I will explain the second measure in detail. This step is an absolute requirement for final removal of contaminated water from the trench, namely stopping water between the turbine building and the trench. 
The trenches of Unit 2 and 3 are connected to the turbine buildings underground. For this reason, newly contaminated water flows into the trenches no matter how much contaminated water is removed from these trenches. Stopping water between the turbine building and the trench is absolutely necessary for removing contaminated water from the trenches and stopping up the trenches with filler. However, as the trenches are filled with highly radioactive water, working there is dangerous. As such, development of a water stoppage method has been a substantial technical challenge. In response to this challenge, we have developed a water stoppage method in which the contaminated water inside the trenches is frozen. Since this is an application of new technology, a mock-up test was conducted to examine whether the water can actually be stopped. Now let me explain about the frozen water stoppage method. First, a hole is bored in the upper side of a trench with a drill, and a freezer pipe is inserted into the trench. Next, a fabric bag called a packer is inserted so that it can surround the freezer pipe. Then, this packer is expanded by being filled with cement and a material called bentonite, thereby blocking up the trench. This facilitates generation of an ice wall. By being refrigerated in this state, the water inside the trench is frozen together with the packer, so that a strong ice wall is generated for completely stopping water. Finally, the accumulated water in the trench is removed. Again, this is a new method created in response to this challenge. The frozen water stoppage method was originally intended to generate frozen soil by inserting a freezer pipe into the ground and freezing the water contained in the soil, a proven technology for this purpose. However, freezing accumulated water itself to form an ice wall in a desired location is being tried this time. In practice, it is very difficult and has never been tried before. It's another bullshit experiment. Now let me explain about the results of the mock-up tests. This is a mock-up unit. This is a large-scale unit, fully half the size of the actual one. This is a mock trench measuring 2 meters in width and 2 meters in depth. A freezer pipe is installed separating the front and back sides of the trench. This is one of the test results and you can see an ice wall already formed. Water accumulated in the front side has been removed. The part behind the ice wall has water two meters deep. Water inside the trench has been completely stopped by the ice wall. This is another test result obtained in a test case simulating a case where obstacles such as piping and cable trays prohibit full insertion of the packer. In this case also, an ice wall was successfully formed with an increased number of freezer pipes. As in the above case, the part behind the ice wall has water two meters deep. For example, as you can see, the piping has been blocked with the water inside it frozen. Based on these tests using our large-scale mock-up unit, we can now clearly see that we will be able to solve the difficult problem of stopping the highly radioactive contaminated water accumulated inside the underground trenches. In other news, a proud species commits suicide rather than being driven to extinction by humans. Please note that the ice wall will not leak water because it is capable of repairing itself. Even if it develops cracks, water penetrating into the cracks will be frozen. Additionally, the ice, formed in a frozen wall over a long time, is not easy to melt. When the mainstream press and the government says nobody could have predicted this, they're lying through their fucking teeth. We will start with the freezing of the Unit 2 trenches beginning around March 2014. Complete formation of an ice wall will take a long time. However, we are planning to form a strong ice wall and then start removing water from the trenches in May 2014. After the water removal, the trenches will be blocked with filler. We will proceed with implementation for Unit 3 following the results of implementation for Unit 2. We are determined to steadily solve on-site problems using this technology. Thank you for watching this video.